Number 10. Discovery Island When it comes to abandoned Disney theme parks and rides, there's no place more notorious than Discovery Island. This island is located inside Disney World, and it's still standing today. There's nothing left but ruins and sad memories, but it's definitely still inside of the Disney World Park in Orlando, Florida. Discovery Island was once a vibrant theme park centered towards birds and fauna. It originally opened in 1974 under the name Treasure Island, clearly inspired by the Disney film of the same name. But the park was later renamed Discovery Island. It was supposed to be a relaxing destination where tourists could view the most exotic birds in the world and check out a myriad of interesting plant life. But then came the horror. Not only did Discovery Island turn into an avian paradise with flamingos and cockatoos, but it also became a place of torture and abuse. There was a scandal in 1989 in which Walt Disney World had to be investigated because of the inhumane treatment of birds. It was found that several employees were shooting at the hawks, beating vultures with sticks, and deliberately destroying birds' nests. Disney actually had to settle in court, and the negative press resulted in a steep decline of visitors going to Discovery Island. According to Insider Magazine, the attraction closed in 1999 and the doors have remained shut ever since. Nobody's allowed on the island, including staff and visitors. Most of the original structures are still there, but most of them are badly damaged and decayed. It's unclear if Discovery Island will ever reopen to the public. Number 9. The Rainbow Tunnel It may seem completely silly and ridiculous in 2020, but between 1982 and 1992, guests at Disney World absolutely loved the Rainbow Tunnel. It was an exciting journey into the imagination located inside the ImageWorks Glass Pyramid. The Rainbow Tunnel gained major popularity in the 1980s after Michael Jackson did an exciting photo shoot inside. The tunnel was filled with motion detectors so that when you walked through it, a specific color would follow you all the way to the end of the tunnel. But of course, it was the 1980s and the effect was too complicated. Instead, the tunnel was set to cascade mode, which made it more suitable for everyone. As you walked through the tunnel, the colors would change and the rings would move in such a way that mimicked a futuristic sensory experience. But by 1992, the Imagination Pavilion was no longer needed. Imageworks was moved, the second floor was closed to the public, and the Rainbow Tunnel was abandoned. It wasn't until a video surfaced in 2011, nearly 20 years after the Rainbow Tunnel was closed permanently, that it was discovered to be fully intact. It was still abandoned and it was in pretty rough shape, but it was still there. However, the Imagination Pavilion reopened in 2016, and at that time, the Rainbow Tunnel was being dismantled. It's unclear exactly what will replace it or what would have prompted Disney to destroy such an iconic ride. But by 2020, the entirety of the Rainbow Tunnel was destroyed. Number 8. River Country Believe it or not, there is an entire theme park hidden at Walt Disney World that's been rotting away and decaying for around two decades. It was once known as River Country, and it's one of the secrets Disney does not want you to know about. River Country opened in 1976 and was one of the first major additions after the park opened its doors in 1971. It was also one of the first water-only theme parks ever constructed. It had the Tom Sawyer swimming hole, massive water slides, a sand bottom lake, tire swings, and of course, bridges. It was a fully functional water park. Unfortunately, after 25 years, River County grew outdated. Between 1976 and 2001, Disney World had changed significantly. They had already built two more water parks, including Typhoon Lagoon in 1989 and Blizzard Beach in 1995. And because of that, River Country just wasn't what it used to be. It closed for annual winter refurbishment in 2001 and never reopened. Disney didn't announce its official closing until 2005. Of course, considering this is Disney we're talking about, there are a lot of crazy theories about why River Country was closed. There was a theory for a while about brain-eating amoeba in the water. But of course, it's most likely that the park was just old and outdated, and keeping it open would have been more trouble than it was worth. Have you ever been to Disney World? What's your favorite ride? Or if you've never been, what ride would you most like to go on? Tell me about your Disney World favorites in the comments below. Then be sure to subscribe for more amazing videos if you haven't already. Number 7. Wonders of Life Some people say the Wonders of Life attraction was the least fun place to go in the history of Epcot. The building once housed all kinds of bizarre rides. Well, some people wouldn't even really call them rides. The Wonders of Life building hosted Body Wars and Cranium Command, and it was home to lots of other exhibitions that mostly reminded visitors of Disney World 
just how hopelessly out of shape they were. The only good thing about Wonders of Life was that you never had to wait for any of the rides. Everything was engineered towards healthcare and the human body, physical fitness, medicine, and nutrition. As you can imagine, this was not very captivating for young kids or adults snacking on greasy snacks or salty pretzels. The Wonders of Life building operated from 1989 to 2007. This kind of shows how interested people were in health and the human body up until the 2000s, when that kind of thing really went out of style. As of 2019, the Wonders of Life building has been transformed into a construction site. It'll be replaced by Disney's new Play Pavilion. Number 6. Nara Dreamland Nara Dreamland is not technically part of any Disney operation, and in fact, there's a real Disneyland in Japan just a few hours away in Tokyo. But there's no doubt that the creators of Nara Dreamland, located near the busy port city of Osaka, was based on the famous Disneyland Park in California. Nara Dreamland was built in 1961. It opened with a fairy tale castle, some roller coasters, and a handful of other rides primarily based on what the Americans did in California. But unlike Disneyland, Dreamland was never meant to last. Even though the park started out extremely well, it was obsolete before the creators had any idea what was going on. The park eventually closed in 2006 because of low visitor numbers. But as is customary in Japan, the land was simply abandoned and left to ruin. The ticket booths are still there, the roller coaster is still standing, and even the coffee machines are still sitting in the restaurant. It honestly looks like some kind of apocalyptic event caused the abandonment of the city. But no, it was just outdated. With Tokyo Disneyland a few hours away and Universal Studios less than 30 minutes away by train in Osaka, Nara Dreamland didn't stand a chance. Number 5. The Singing Runway The Singing Runway was once an airport designed specifically for Disney World in Orlando. There's not been another runway since its closure in 1972, but apparently it still sings if you drive fast enough along it. It's also known as the Lake Buena Vista Stoppel Port Runway, and all that remains is a landing strip that once had catered to small aircrafts flying between the Central International Airports in Florida and Disney World. It was built around 1970, but it was only used for between one or two years by Shawnee Airlines before flights were ultimately discontinued. The reason it's known as the Singing Runway is because when planes landed, speakers would play When You Wish Upon a Star. If you drive over the runway at 45 miles per hour, some people say the speakers still turn on and sing the original song. After the runway was abandoned in 1972, the area was used primarily as backstage parking and for storage. It turned out that landing planes on the runway was actually too dangerous. But there's another bizarre reason why planes will never land at this airport again. After 9-11, Disney World was given its own protected airspace. The skies above Disney became a no-fly zone. Cinderella's castle actually has the same airspace protections as the White House. Number 4. The Mark Twain Boat At Disneyland Paris, the Mark Twain Riverboat has been abandoned. It's currently floating sadly in the Frontierlands rivers of the Far West. Not only is the boat completely abandoned, but it's in terrible shape. The wooden structure of the boat appears to have mostly rotted and fallen into the murky waters. And yes, it's still sitting in full view of all the guests who ride on the Disneyland Railroad. This boat was based on the original Mark Twain Riverboat attraction from Disneyland in Anaheim. It's one of two vessels that once operated in Paris. However, it hasn't been functional since 2011. The boat had originally been dry docked, but it was placed into the water so that the second boat, the Molly Brown, could be refurbished. It's unclear if the Mark Twain Riverboat will also undergo refurbishment. Judging by the horrendous state of the vessel, it needs to be fixed immediately, or it will probably never work again. For now, it's essentially become a rotting eyesore. Number 3. Food Rocks Food Rocks was perhaps the strangest attraction ever designed at Epcot. It featured singing food, and that's pretty much it. Food would sing the message of healthy eating to anyone bored enough to stop and listen. As you can imagine, this was certainly not the most popular attraction at Epcot, and it only lasted for 10 years before joining the other strange and forgotten attractions at Walt Disney World in Orlando. But it did start life out on the right path. When Epcot first opened in 1982, it had a number of interesting pavilions. There was Future World, World Showcase, the Land Pavilion. Because Kraft Foods was the first sponsor of the Land Pavilion, they had a pretty influential hand in the initial design. They were responsible for many of the attractions, the restaurants, and the shops inside of the pavilion. But then in 1992, Nestle took over for Kraft and changed quite a bit about the pavilion. They got rid of the boring boat ride that focused on agriculture and upgraded the cinematic presentations. They also changed the Kitchen Cabaret Review to Food Rocks, a musical stage complete with animatronic figures. Looking back on it today, it seems a little horrifying. 
Food Rocks opened in 1994, featuring the voices of U2, the Beach Boys, the Police, and even Peter Gabriel. But inevitably, people didn't really care about listening to singing food, and Food Rocks was closed and abandoned in 2004. Number 2. The People Mover The People Mover was one of Walt Disney's last ideas. It was his premier idea for Epcot before it opened. And if you've ever wondered what Epcot stands for, it's the Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. Walt Disney really wanted to build it at Disney World and to have a super futuristic community. He wanted a futuristic way to move people from one place to another. This was how he came up with the idea for the People Mover. Unfortunately, Walt never got to see it. He passed away in 1966 and the People Mover opened the following year. If you're not sure what the People Mover is, it was a transportation attraction that hauled guests in small trains around Tomorrowland on an elevated platform. At the time of its conception, many people believed it would end up being a serious transportation system for inner-city public transport. But it didn't turn out that way. The ride was closed in 1995 and was replaced by the Rocket Rods, which was essentially the same thing, only faster. The Rocket Rods opened in 1998 and then closed two years later because of technical problems. However, the remains of this bizarre transportation system can still be seen today hovering over Tomorrowland. The tracks are desolate and the entire structure looks ready to fall down, but nonetheless, it's still there. As of 2020, there don't appear to be any plans for revamping the original People Mover into something practical. Number 1. Beastly Kingdom Beastly Kingdom is not actually an abandoned park. It was once an idea for a bizarre Disney attraction, but it never came to life. You may be familiar with Animal Kingdom, but the truth of the original concept is far stranger than you could ever imagine. Beastly Kingdom was supposed to include mythological creatures, including dragons. It was supposed to be a secondary part of the animal kingdom. The plan at the beginning was to incorporate three different types of animals into one larger park. Disney wanted to have real animals, extinct animals, and imaginary animals. And if you think this sounds like some lunatic's version of Jurassic Park, you wouldn't be far off. When Animal Kingdom opened in 1998, there were exhibits for real and extinct animals, and there were plans for bringing the imaginary creatures in later on. There would have been dragons and unicorns. There also would have been a bridge that you crossed to enter the Beastly Kingdom, where you would have been met by animals from people's imaginations. One of the attraction concepts had been a ride called Quest of the Unicorn. You would have had to walk through a maze to find and awaken a legendary unicorn. And if this sounds amazing, that's because it kind of is. Unfortunately, the concept was scrapped because of budget cuts. Things like the Dragon's Tower, a musical boat ride inspired by the film Fantasia, and many other bizarre rides were just too expensive to build, and the idea was scrapped. Number 10. Wuhan Doomsday Tunnels By far one of the most horrifying secret military bases is actually built under the Chinese city of Wuhan, the city where the coronavirus allegedly started from back in 2020. According to a report from Express News, China actually built the secret doomsday tunnels underneath this city to serve as a special headquarters for a division of the military in the possible event of a nuclear war. There are reports claiming that there are hundreds of feet of tunnels about 50 miles from Wuhan, complete with meeting rooms, offices, and other command centers. It's currently unclear if this secret military installation has anything to do with the virus that ravaged the world, but it's definitely a possibility. Of course, this base was apparently built at the end of the 1960s, so the virus in the base may not be related. But the truth is, nobody really knows what's going on, especially when the Chinese military is involved. And even though the tunnels were recently opened to the public and featured as a tourist attraction, there could still be some funny business going on behind closed doors. After all, it's highly unlikely that any country would turn a secret military installation into a tourist site without some kind of ulterior motive. The official size of the complex has never been disclosed, and there's a chance it could be much larger than people realize. Number 9. Kapustin Yar Kapustin Yar is basically the Area 51 of Russia. It was the site where the very first dog ever was launched into space, and it's been the subject of much scrutiny since it was originally established by the Soviet Union back in 1946. There have been many launches from this site, including experimental rockets. There was even a small town erected nearby the secret military facility to house the people working there. From between 1957 to 1961, there were at least five nuclear tests performed. And it's still believed that the Russians are using this secret base to develop new technologies. There are even some conspiracy theories that claim UFO sightings from the Soviet era all lead back to Kapustin Yar. People who know a lot about this place refer to it as the Russian Roswell. If you're wondering where such a massive secret base is located, it's about 500 miles south of Moscow in the absolute middle of nowhere, slightly north of the country of Georgia. 
And as for the most famous alien sighting that has to do with Kapustin Yar, it happened in 1986, when an alien spacecraft allegedly crashed into the nearby Mount Izvez Tokovaya. The incident was even reported by the New York Times, who published a piece about a large sphere that crashed and an eyewitness account that claimed an alien appeared from the site wearing silvery overalls with three eyeballs. Of course, this has never been confirmed, but who's to say the craft and the three-eyed alien aren't still hidden underground in this vast and secret site? Number 8. Area 51 If you happen to be a citizen of the United States of America, there's no military secret base more interesting than Area 51. It's captured the imagination of people all over the world and it's become an obsession with Americans for over 50 years. It's inspired movies, television shows, and even a bunch of lunatics to try and break into the site just recently, an attempt that was quickly thwarted. But what's really going on in Area 51? Is this really a giant secret military installation? Is it really filled with alien technology? Unfortunately, the truth is that we don't really know. But we do know some things. According to CBS News, Area 51 was first created during the Cold War between Russia and America as a place for the U.S. to develop better and more impressive technologies. Somewhere along the line, the very real military site became associated with extraterrestrial ships and small green aliens. Located in the middle of the Nevada desert, it's easy to see why such a secret base in such a remote location could spawn so many conspiracy theories. The site itself is about 38,400 acres. It's located near Groom Lake, and it has one of the longest runways in the world. We also know that workers don't arrive to Area 51 with their cars. There's actually a private terminal at the Las Vegas International Airport that makes flights to and from the secret site, meaning it's almost impossible to track who goes in and out of the building. But as for aliens, unfortunately, we don't have any concrete proof. And the fact is that even in 2021, nobody has any idea what's going on under the Nevada desert. Number 7. American Ice Base Unknown to many Americans, there's a secret United States base under the ice of Greenland known as Camp Century. It's like something out of a James Bond movie. This base is located only 800 miles south from the North Pole, and it's a hidden fortress of ice tunnels stretching at least 2,500 miles. It was originally meant to hold around 600 nuclear missiles underneath the ice, allowing the U.S. to quickly strike anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere. The construction originally began in 1959, though at the time the base was considered to be nothing but a scientific research facility. However, Camp Century was abandoned within just 10 years. The first series of tunnels were built, but before the entire facility could get up and running, the military realized they'd made a horrible mistake. It seemed that the ice was melting, and it could cause the entire base to eventually run off into the sea. Perhaps if they had listened to the scientists talking about global warming, they might have realized that building a military base on a quickly melting ice sheet was a horrendous idea. But of course, nobody listened. According to a research paper published in 2016 in Geophysical Research Letters, the abandoned military installation is now threatening to pour dangerous pollutants into the water as the ice sheet melts faster than previously anticipated. It's been estimated that at least 20,000 liters of chemical waste will soon spill into the ocean, which is obviously a pretty bad day for the fishes and, let's not forget, for the humans as well because, well, we use the oceans. Number 6. Pine Gap when you think about secret military bases, you probably think of places like the US and Russia. But in the very center of Australia, there's one of the most secret bases that nobody has ever heard of. It's known as Pine Gap, and some people claim that the base is being used to gather intelligence on Australia's own citizens. Even though officials went on national television to claim that the facility was not being used to spy on anyone, that didn't really calm the public down. People still believe this secret facility is up to no good, but because nobody's allowed to do a real inspection, it's impossible to say what's going on in there. However, some information did come to light in 2013 when it was revealed that the Pine Gap facility had helped the U.S. with drone strikes against terrorist groups in Afghanistan and Pakistan. It looks like Australia isn't quite as peaceful as everybody thinks. Fast forward to 2021, and you don't see much mention of this secret facility anywhere in the news. And it seems as if people have entirely forgotten about it. But rest assured, it's still there. Number 5. Nazi Bunkers in Antarctica Let's forget about secret modern military facilities for a moment and turn our attention to the secret Nazi bunkers of Antarctica. There are plenty of conspiracy theories surrounding Hitler and the Nazi party, but perhaps one of the theories with the most truth behind it revolves around our southernmost continent. It all started when the Nazis sent an expedition to Antarctica back in 1938. It's quite murky as to what exactly happened or what the initial purpose of the venture was, but there are a lot of claims that it was a pretty big expedition with scientific ships and a heavy military presence. Then again, others say it was only a single ship that went looking for territory for the German whalers to hunt whales. This was a very long time ago, and the information we have is foggy at best. 
However, there is some indication that the Nazis really did try to develop a sustainable base on the continent of Antarctica, which would have staked the entire piece of land for the German nation had they won the war. Today, there's no evidence left in the ice, or at least none that anyone has ever found. If there truly is a Nazi base in Antarctica from the 1930s, it's likely been frozen over and filled with snow. This might be something our descendants find in a few thousand years when searching for ancient artifacts. If they can survive the melting of all the polar ice caps, maybe they'll find it then. Number 4. The Secret Norway Naval Base There was a lot of bases being built during the Cold War, not only by the US and Russia, but also by European powers. One of these secret bases was constructed on the shores of Norway just outside of the small city of Tromso. And yes, this base is located in the Arctic Circle, one of the coldest places on Earth. It's called the Olavsvan Naval Base, and it was carved into the side of the rocky coast back in 1967, all but invisible to aircrafts passing overhead. The base was made for submarines to have direct access to the sea. This made it a very important strategic location for Norway to defend against a possible Russian attack. However, Norway doesn't even own its Arctic naval base anymore. Norway apparently lost interest in their secret facility and decommissioned it in 2009. It seems that Norway is no longer worried about a secret submarine invasion from their eastern neighbors. Since its decommission, the base has primarily been used by companies with strong links to Russia, with the Russians actually using the base to dock their own vessels. Talk about the tables turning. Nobody's entirely sure what the Russians could be plotting with the not-so-secretive installation, but it definitely feels like a pretty poor decision on the part of Norway. Number 3. Porton Down Even the United Kingdom has a top-secret military installation. Their facility is known as Porton Down, and it's filled with scientists who apparently carry out research in areas such as chemical weapon warfare and deadly diseases and viruses. According to a recent report from the BBC, one of their correspondents was given rare access to the secret facility. This guy was given a world-class tour. Apparently, they're not doing anything to create new chemical weapons. Instead, they're primarily working to counter naturally occurring viruses that could devastate the world. And they're also working on countermeasures for things like possible nerve gas attacks. But of course, this could be a great big lie. What better way to get the public off your back than by letting a reporter into your secret facility to poke around and give the all clear? The truth is that nobody knows what's in all those vials and beakers. The scientists at the facility could be doing anything from animal testing to developing dangerous biological warfare agents that could wipe out mankind. On the other hand, they could just be trying to eradicate the flu. This is definitely a big issue when it comes to secret military facilities, because unless you're in the know, you just don't know. Number 2. Secret U.S. Underwater Bases This next story seems like something out of a science fiction novel. According to some reports, there could be secret U.S. military bases located under the water that absolutely nobody knows about. And this actually makes sense. According to a report from How Stuff Works, an undersea base would be hard to detect, nearly impossible to infiltrate, and unobservable by modern satellites. Inside of an underwater base, scientists and military professionals could do anything they wanted. So is there really an underwater base somewhere in the U.S. territory? Well, we aren't really sure. The idea to create bases deep underneath the water was first proposed in 1968. There was even a proposal written in a paper by the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics in which they proposed that an underwater base could use special mining techniques and that it could be relatively affordable. But of course, by relatively affordable, they really meant billions of dollars. But let's take a closer look. There are in fact several underwater hotels in the world but these are located only about 20 feet under the surface or less. If there were a deep sea base somewhere, it would most likely be miles under the surface and completely undetectable. The truth is that if one of these bases does exist like in Austin Powers, nobody would ever even know about it. Number 1. Nuclear Secrets in the Forest One of the biggest cover-ups in Soviet history happened in Poland during the height of the Cold War. Believe it or not, many people refer to this place as the Polish Chernobyl because of how much secrecy surrounded it back in the 80s. I'm talking about a place called Born Solinowo, located in a forest in the mostly unpopulated region of northern Poland. It's an emerging travel destination for tourists, and it's a beautiful natural area, and it has a very dark past. There were almost 12,000 Soviet troops stationed at the military installation in this region before the collapse of the Soviet Union way back in 1991. According to a report from CNN, the soldiers were guarding a secret nuclear installation that could have been used by the Soviets to completely wipe out just about any western city in Europe. How exactly the installation was abandoned is still shrouded in quite a bit of secrecy, as is what happened to the 500 kiloton warheads. But one thing we know for sure is that the nuclear silos are still there today and slowly being eaten by the forest. The silos are covered in graffiti, all the storage chambers that once held secret nuclear weapons are now neglected and mostly vandalized, and the facility is basically useless. 
Still, all those secret nukes must have ended up somewhere. The only question now is, where? Number 10. The Skinalev Air Show Disaster When air shows go wrong, it can be disastrous. There's no better example of just how dangerous an air show can be than the accident at Skinalev Airfield in Ukraine back in July of 2002. It was truly horrific and widely regarded as the deadliest air show incident in all of human history. A Ukrainian Air Force Su-27 flanker crashed while performing a difficult maneuver at a low altitude. It descended rapidly towards the taxiway, and that was when disaster struck. The left wing of the airplane hit a tree, which caused the plane to go out of control and hit the asphalt, even dragging with it a fence of barbed wire. Even though the two pilots managed to eject to safety, 77 people were killed and 545 people were injured. This was a massive tragedy with an unheard of loss of life. The barbed wire was dragged over onlookers. Then, the aircraft hit a stationary vehicle and a 275 MD transport aircraft before exploding at the same minute it cartwheeled into the crowd of spectators. As you can imagine, it was absolute pandemonium when the explosion occurred. Those directly in the blast died and others were horribly injured. Apparently, the pilots had been given a faulty map of the airbase, which caused them to misinterpret where the craft was going. It also didn't help that they had allegedly been denied an extra rehearsal flight before the show. Number 9. Screams of Terror In 1972, a disaster of biblical proportions unfolded in Sacramento, resulting in nearly two dozen deaths and at least 30 injuries. It all occurred at the end of an air show being held at the executive airport. But the crash didn't happen at the airport. Instead, the pilot attempted to take off on the 3,000-foot F-86 Sabre jet aircraft. Instead of taking off and flying away, the aircraft overran the runway and skidded across Freeport Boulevard. The huge aircraft then crashed directly into Farrell's Restaurant, a busy ice cream parlor full of unsuspecting customers. There were at least 100 people inside the shop when the airplane literally smashed through the doors. 12 children were killed and 10 adults lost their lives, and 30 others suffered devastating injuries. It was a huge tragedy, but just wait until you hear the next part. In 2020, plans were submitted for a restaurant to be constructed across from the Sacramento Executive Airport. That in itself isn't a bad idea. The problem is that the design included the nose of a Boeing 747 sticking out from the front. Considering that an airplane crashed through an ice cream shop just a few yards away from where the restaurant would be built, it feels like a pretty horrendous idea. And as you can guess, it's not been received very well by the locals. What do you think of air shows? Should they even be legal after all these tragedies? Is the excitement worth the risk? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Then be sure to subscribe to American Eye if you haven't already, so you can get even more intense videos just like this one. Number 8. The Reno Air Races Crash An air show disaster in Reno back in 2011 was caused by a devastating combination of overused aircraft parts and blistering speed. When the seasoned air pilot Jimmy Leeward pushed his modified P-51 Mustang to its limits, cruising at an incredible 445 knots, which was 35 knots faster than Jimmy had ever flown the vehicle before, he ran into a serious problem. According to the National Transportation Safety Board, there were lock nuts on the aerodynamic surface on a part of the tail that hadn't been replaced or maintained in at least 26 years. The worn nuts caused screws to go loose. So when Jimmy sped down the Nevada runway at 445 knots, the loose screws caused dangerous vibrations to occur. The plane then reared up at an impossible 17 Gs, knocking Leeward out cold. No longer in control of the plane, Leeward was helpless as the aircraft rolled, soared towards the ground, then smashed straight into a boxed seating area. It was absolute chaos. According to the report from CNN, Jimmy Leeward was killed instantly, 10 spectators died in the wreckage, and 60 others were injured when a hailstorm of debris came raining down over the stands. The incident was horrifying enough that it nearly put an end to the national championship air races. However, the organizers fought tooth and nail not to be shut down, and the race was held once again the following year. Number 7. The Tenerife Airport Disaster This next disaster wasn't at an air show, but it's definitely worth a mention. On March 27, 1977, two 747 passenger jets collided on the runway at the Los Rodeos Airport in Spain, now known as the Tenerife North Airport. This was the worst crash to happen at an airport in Spanish history. In fact, it was the deadliest aviation disaster since planes took to the skies. The incident actually took place after a terrorist attack at the Gran Canaria Airport, causing a lot of flights to be diverted to the Los Rodeos Airport. The airport became congested with way too many airplanes parked on the taxiway, and then a thick screen of fog drifted onto the airfield. Visibility was extremely reduced, with the pilots and the control tower struggling to keep up with what was happening. And then came the collision. KLM Flight 4805 was initiating its takeoff while Pan Am Flight 1736 was still sitting on the runway and about to head onto the taxiway. Basically, one of the airplanes was making a wrong turn while the other was trying to take off. The KLM airliner smashed straight into the Pan Am airliner and the impact and subsequent fire resulted in everyone on board the KLM flight being killed. 
In addition, almost everyone who was on board the Pan Am flight also died. There were only 61 survivors from the front section of the airplane. In total, this accident had 583 fatalities, more than any other aviation accident in human history. Number six, the 1962 Seattle World's Fair accident. The Seattle World Fair used to be a huge deal. It was arguably the most exciting exhibition in the United States back in the 1960s. But on April 21, 1962, the Seattle World's Fair ended in tragedy. For some people, it was a day of excitement. But for one unfortunate family, it was a day the world would never forget, for all the wrong reasons. The fair started, bells went off, balloons were sent into the air, and 10 F-102s flew over the gathering crowds. However, the Rutka family were not in attendance, as they were on vacation in Canada. Their house was sitting empty. What they didn't know was that their trip to Canada saved their lives. One of the Air Force planes that took off above the World's Fair ran into a bit of trouble. It lost control and crashed into the Rudka family's neighborhood, killing two of their neighbors and completely destroying their home. The reason for the crash was that the plane's engines apparently flamed out and the pilot was unable to restart the engine. He was forced to ditch the plane and eject himself to safety, landing near Lake Washington. Unfortunately, there was nothing that could be done about the descending airplane as it smashed directly into the Rutka's home. If they'd been inside, the entire family surely would have died. Lucky for them, they decided to take a family vacation. Number five, when planes collide. Another horrifying accident at an air show occurred in 1996 in Bartlesville. This accident was not as deadly as some of the other ones throughout aviation history, but it did involve the death of a local news broadcaster. It also involved two airplanes that you would never expect to crash into one another. While the pair of biplanes from the early 1900s flew over Frank Phillips Field, they ended up colliding. The pilot of the 1928 KR-31 biplane and the pilot of the Waco biplane, plus both of their passengers, were killed almost instantly when the aircraft's impact in midair. At the time of the accident, it wasn't clear what caused them to crash. The day had been clear, the weather was sunny, and they were both skilled pilots. The incident happened while one plane made a banking maneuver and the other plane approached from the rear. One plane clipped the other and both of them ended up turning up for about 300 feet, 90 meters, before spiraling back down to the ground and crashing. One of the planes landed in a grove of trees and burst into flame, while the other smashed into the ground, missing a house by less than 50 yards, 45 meters. Number four the crash of the Vulcan bomber. One of the earliest air show disasters happened in 1958 when a prototype bomber known as the Vulcan decided to make a surprise flyby during an air show taking place in Nottinghamshire. This proved to be a deadly mistake that would cost many people their lives. Somewhere around one o'clock in the afternoon, the Avro Vulcan VX770 left the runway. It was the first time this type of vehicle would ever take flight as it was truly a prototype. The Vulcan took off, it tested its new engines, and the crew of four decided it would be a spectacular surprise for those in attendance at the air show if they made a sneaky appearance. Unfortunately, the starboard wing kinked and then utterly disintegrated, causing the prototype aircraft to plummet towards the earth. The bomber crashed into the runway controller's caravan and exploded, killing three men on the ground and the entire crew of four. But it could have been worse. According to eyewitness accounts, the wing was coming all the way off, and without skilled intervention, the bomber would have crashed into the crowd of spectators. The pilot fought tooth and nail to keep the airplane straight, causing it to crash into the caravan instead of the stand full of civilians. Instead of just seven people dying, the number could have been dramatically worse. Number three, the 1973 Paris Air Show. The 1973 Paris Air Show disaster had a lot to do with politics. During this time, the Soviet Union and the West were competing at everything. One of the biggest competitions going on was to see who could build the very best aircrafts, from supersonic jets to passenger airliners. And so, the Soviets were eager to show off their Tupolev Tu-144 at the 1973 Paris Air Show. Unfortunately, it didn't go as the Russians planned. The aircraft had flown for the very first time the year before, and the Russians were hoping to make a serious impression at the show. And in a way, they did. The initial flight went well, but when the aircraft began to approach for landing, it suddenly arced upwards with all four engines at full power. Then it stalled somewhere around 2,000 feet, 600 meters. The aircraft then went into a steep dive, it broke into pieces in midair, most of the plane disintegrated, and it finally crashed. The crash resulted in 15 houses being destroyed and all six people on board the Tu-144 being killed, plus eight casualties on the ground. At least three of the dead were children, and at least six people received serious injuries because of the devastation. Suffice it to say, the Paris Air Show was a huge disaster for the Russians. Number two, the Ostend Airport Air Show Massacre. When a light plane crashed 20-odd years ago at the Ostend Airport Air Show, it was a verifiable massacre. The plane was trying to pull out of a nosedive when it accidentally hit the edge of the runway and burst into a massive ball of flame and fire. 
It happened unfortunately near a first aid post and an area filled with spectators. As you can already guess by the other stories about air show tragedies, it didn't go very well for those involved. The pilot was killed instantly, nine spectators were caught up in the explosion in the hail of debris, and at least 16 people nearby were injured. Most of the injuries came from serious burns caused by the flaming debris as it rained hellfire on those just looking to enjoy an afternoon of airplanes. Since this horrifying incident, the Austin Air Show has not been held again. Number one. The Rammstein Air Show. In 1988, the Rammstein Air Show cemented itself as one of the worst disasters in aviation history. While the Italian air squad, Frecce Tricolori, attempted to complete a complex maneuver known as the Pierced Heart, a completely separate pilot accidentally intersected their course, causing all five of the jets to fly straight towards each other while going 370 miles per hour. Three of the planes collided with each other. The result was a horrendous plane crash. One of the planes went straight down into the runway, a giant fireball of jet fuel straight into a crowd of over 300,000 people. Another plane crashed beside the runway, killing the pilot on impact. And as for the third plane, it crashed into a medical helicopter of all things. Unfortunately for the pilot, he ejected too late and perished on the runway before his parachute was able to be deployed. At the end of this horrific incident, at least 70 people were killed. Not only that, but at least 1,500 were injured. Considering how many fatalities there were and how many lives were ruined that day, the deceased were eventually honored at a memorial just outside of the airbase. Those who were severely mutilated by the falling debris or scorched and burned from the raging fuselage were eventually compensated after many years of legal struggles with the authorities. Have you ever been to an air show? Let me know in the comments about any disasters or close calls you may have seen. Be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.